Hi there and welcome back to Ask h &B. My name's Holly Roper, I'm a registered nutritionist and science communications manager here at Holland & Barrett. I'm so excited to be the host of this series and today I'm joined by Dr Jenna Machocki. We're going to be answering all of your burning questions around immunity. So Jenna, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Holly. So Jenna, for those who don't know, maybe you could explain a little bit more about your expertise and qualifications. So I'm an immunologist, which for anyone who's not familiar with that term, basically means somebody who studies everything about the immune system. And that covers infections, autoimmune disease, allergies, and things like inflammatory disease. Well, thank you for being here with us today. Mm -hmm. Our first question is probably one of the biggest pillars of wellness, and that mm. is good quality sleep. Yes. So what does the science currently say between sleep and our immune systems? Yeah, well, in short, I'd say sleep literally makes your immune system work. So it's really, really fundamental. And it's something that we kind of overlook a little bit when it comes to our immune system. The science tells us that if you're habitually sleeping, say, less than seven hours a night, it can increase your risk of catching uh, a cold or flu or a viral infection by up to 30%. And if you're sleeping less than five hours a night, then you've got a 50% higher chance of getting sick if you encounter a virus. So it's really, really important. Um, it Sleep helps our immune system with something called immune memory. Mm -hmm. So that's your ability of your immune system to re remember infections you've seen before and respond to them faster. And it can also lead to things like uh, unwanted inflammation if we're not sleeping enough mm -hmm. and there's new emerging research that shows that uh, poor quality sleep can actually have a negative impact on the gut microbes and we spoke last time about how our gut health is really really important for immune health okay so that's really interesting does it matter the time that we sleep so i'm just thinking about shift workers in mm. particular does that impact the immune system at all yes yes there's also an emerging uh, piece of science around what we call the circadian rhythm so that is that we are as humans we're meant to be awake in the daytime and asleep at night but Obviously, there are certain jobs where that is reversed, and we know that this can have an impact on our immune health. And that's something I think we need to be really conscious of. And uh, as the science evolves, hopefully we are better tools to support the people who are doing shift work. So, Jenna, what do you mean by inflammation? Yeah, it's a really good place to explain that a little bit more because we hear a lot about inflammation, how this is bad for us, how we should avoid it. But actually, inflammation is part of your immune system's weaponry. It's what it uses to keep us well. Without inflammation, we wouldn't be able to fight off infections. Mm -hmm. So it is really, really critical, but it's also meant to be short term because while it damages any viruses or bacteria that's infecting you, it can also cause some collateral damage to our own delicate cells and mm -hmm. tissues. And it's what gives you those awful symptoms when you have an infection. So we need to make sure it's controlled and regulated and certain lifestyle factors, you know, things like poor sleep or poor diet can actually lead to what we call unwanted inflammation. And over time, this can feed into things like chronic inflammatory diseases. So for now, those at home who maybe are worried that they've got chronic inflammation, mm -hmm. Jenna, what are your top three tips to maybe try and mitigate this? I think diet's really important, that can play a really key role. So um, as we mentioned in the previous episode, lots of colour on your plate because the colourful pigments in fruits and vegetables act as antioxidants and they can quench that unwanted inflammation. Mm -hmm. Looking after our gut health, because if our gut is kind of out of whack, that can lead to unwanted inflammation. And then really taking care of the other aspects of lifestyle. So stress is really important. Mm -hmm. Spending time in nature, getting out for a walk, moving your body, getting fresh air. Those would be the real things that I would dial in. Amazing. So we hear a lot about boosting the immune system. We see mm -hmm. it a lot on social media. We hear it out and about. What does it actually mean to boost your immune system? How can we do that? And do we actually want to do that? Yeah, so that's a really, really interesting point because boosting is a bit of a misnomer when it comes to the immune system. Scientifically, we can't actually boost our immune system and you will see a lot of um, you know, adverts suggesting that a product would boost your immune system. And I think it's really important when we have a fundamental understanding of how our immune system works, it's more about balance. Mm -hmm. You know, we just spoke about inflammation, which is when you're turning the immune system on, but that also has side effects. So we want to make sure we can turn it off again in a timely manner, resolve the inflammation and bring everything back to balance. So it's really more about balance than boosting. But I do understand why people use that phrase, because really people are just looking for ways to make sure their immune system is working properly. And boosting, I guess, just feels like a word that naturally fits that. But really, we talk about balancing or supporting or proper functioning. Mm -hmm. And how we can make ourselves more resilient, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So in terms of snacking now, mm -hmm. what are some of your favourite immune supporting snacks that are easy and convenient to prepare? Yeah, well obviously I've got two kids, so I'm <laughs> always looking for those things that are easy and yeah. convenient to prepare. <laughs> so I love um, making my own mixtures of things like nuts and seeds, nice. adding some dried fruit in there, or something like um, dark chocolate, uh, where you mm. can add all the nuts and seeds, stick mm -hmm. it in the freezer, and then that's a handy little snack. I love um, roasted chickpeas, because mm -hmm. I feel like you can add so many different things. You can make them savory, you could add some cinnamon, maybe a little bit of honey, so they're like a sweet snack. Um, hummus is a really good one with veg veggie sticks. Smoothies are another great way to uh, add in loads of different things and make them really, really tasty, but you know that you're getting all those different plant points in there. You can even throw in some vegetables too, but nice. still have it quite delicious. So when it comes to exercise and our immunity, are there any types of movement that are more favourable? Well, I think just moving more, moving more often and moving in lots of different ways. That's kind of how I pitch it to people. I think we need to break up periods of sedentary time. So even if you're going to the gym in the evening, but you're sitting all day, the gym doesn't really undo all the sitting because when we move our bodies, we're helping move our immune cells around the body and our lymphatic system. So this is the system uh, a bit like our blood circulatory system. But instead of having the heart, which pumps our blood around the body, the lymphatic system requires our muscles mm -hmm. to move. So just breaking up times of sitting, that's really, really important. Um, and exercise is just benefiting your immune system in lots of different mm -hmm. ways. It's helping um, with that anti-inflammatory response, helping get the, the immune cells moving. And really importantly, particularly as we get older, we need to be looking after our muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So as we age, we um, naturally undergo something called sarcopenia, which is basically just age-related muscle loss. And you have to work much harder to hang on to your muscle mass. And that muscle mass is really important for your immune system. In fact, it's, it's really anti-aging. Mm -hmm. So it can help offset some of the age-related immune decline. So I know in the government guidance, it, there's a lot of understanding about getting cardiovascular exercise, when you're walking, running, cycling, or things that get your heart rate up. But there's also the recommendation to get two or more uh, sessions of weight-based exercises. And I think this often gets forgotten. And I would really encourage people to try and find fun ways mm -hmm. to introduce weight-based exercise into your into your week. Amazing. So this can be things like you're just carrying heavy shopping. Yeah, um, exactly. Gardening. Yeah, yeah, carrying your kids. Um, yeah, or you know things like yoga and Pilates where you're putting mm -hmm. resistance on on your body so it doesn't just have to mean going to the gym and lifting weights but anything where there's that resistance on your muscles. So I've heard this term cytokines in relation to immunity. Can you maybe explain what this means? Yep. So cytokines are the communication molecules that our immune cells use to signal to each other. And in terms of our muscles, our muscles produce their own types of cytokines and we call these myokines just because they're coming from the muscle cells instead of the immune cells. But the myokines that are produced when we exercise act on our immune cells and help them function better. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting that burst of exercise, you're getting all those lovely myokines and they're going to help your immune cells do the job better. Okay, so what I'm hearing actually is exercise isn't just about aesthetics and how you look. It actually is helping our insides and our immune system in more ways than we probably know. Yes, 100%. And, you know, when we exercise, it's it's leading to a lower risk of things like respiratory infections, mm -hmm. which we know are really prevalent in winter. It lowers our risk of chronic inflammatory diseases and it makes us feel good as well. Mm, absolutely. So I love the idea of a toolbox and there's no one size that fits all. So maybe you can give some other examples of ways that people can stress Yeah, so I like to divide it up into the sort of like stress resilient mm -hmm. practices. So that's things like meditation, where you need to be doing it regularly mm -hmm. for it to sort of build up that resilience to stress. And then you have the kind of more um, in the moment things that you can do. So, you know, if you are finding yourself in a stressful situation, actually just going for a walk. And instead of really hyper focusing on a screen, as we often do with our computer or phone, Going outside and, and looking sort of at the, the horizon, mm -hmm. it, it sounds really strange, but it makes your eyes sort of change their position in, your, in their sockets, which gives a signal to your brain that you're relaxed because you're looking at the broad vista mm -hmm. instead of hyper-focusing. Mm -hmm. And this can help give a signal to your brain that you're calm or that you, you're safe uh, and help sort of close the loop on that stress response. Mm -hmm. And then the other in-the-moment tool that I really like is using your breath. So we can breathe automatically 
physiologically and our, you know, our body's just breathing without us having any role in that. Or we can take conscious control over our breath. And if we extend the exhale mm -hmm. and just do some breathing where we're extending the exhale, that again sends signals to the brain that we're safe and we're calm and it helps just close the loop on that stress response. And that's something we can do anywhere. Yeah, well. exactly. Yeah, super convenient. Mm -hmm. So it's that time of year where we're all starting to get run down with cold and flu. Mm -hmm. So if a member of our family brings it into the house, what can we do to help them feel better but also reduce the risk of the rest of the family catching it? Yeah, it's a really tricky situation. I think you have to think about transmission. So if it's a respiratory infection, obviously maybe try and keep some distance, mm -hmm. put them in a different room, but try and break that chain of transmission. So making sure that you're disposing of any tissues properly, that they're you know using tissues properly and coughing uh, into the tissue and then making sure it's disposed of. Um, and then just making sure you take care of yourself as a caregiver, because um, if you're poorly as well, you're not gonna be able to take care of other people. Uh, so providing really nourishing food for both of you, making sure that they stay hydrated, um, warming drinks like lemon, ginger and honey that can be really soothing and it can also help ease up that congestion uh, in, the, in the airways, um, soothe a sore throat and the hydration is really important for making sure your immune system is working properly. And then, as I said, nourishing yourselves with some really delicious food to make sure that you're getting all that nutrition, but also eating things that are just delicious and comforting. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So I thought we'd end today's episode with an old wives tale. So Jenna, can you tell us, is it true you'll catch a cold just by simply not wearing enough layers out on a cold day? <laughs> I feel like everyone's heard that from their mother at <laughs> one point or another. But actually, it's, it's technically not true because we only catch a cold if we encounter a virus. Okay. And we could encounter a virus if we've got all those layers on or not. But I think there's some indirect ways that the cold weather can lead us to be more vulnerable to infections. So, you know, we're more likely to huddle close together with other people, so it's easier to transmit viruses. And also we're more likely to be deficient in vitamin D at this time of year because mm -hmm. the sun isn't strong enough. Mm -hmm. So it's there's an indirect sort of loose connection, but ultimately you need to encounter a virus whether you've got your coat on or not. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for joining us on this episode of Ask h &B. Thanks for having me, Holly. It's been lovely chatting and I hope everyone at home has really enjoyed today's episode and learned something new about their immune system. Hopefully now you can start building your own toolbox of tips and tricks to make sure that you keep you and your family well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jenna. And thank you to everyone who's watched at home. I really hope you found it interesting. And don't forget, we've got loads of videos on this YouTube channel where we simplify some of the biggest health and wellness topics. I'll see you soon.